Okay, so before we gonna go on to studying gesture and sequence, I wanted to do one more, um, just kind of static image, and just go through those same steps again. And we'll do the exact same process, except this one I might add uh, another step that to me is interesting and useful. So here's my head. That's always my step one. Here I'm going to put in um, maybe even a, a wrapping line early on. And we can do a straight line just to tilt. And now same sequence. Cervical. Thoracic. I'm going to make sure these have that sense of asymmetry and movement between them. I'm going to do that stretch or the kind of curvature from the rib cage through the abdomen into the pelvis. Lumbar. And then pelvis on another asymmetrical related line to the lumbar. And then let's um, kind of go across and start to develop up some of these wrapping lines. Here I'm going to swing the wrapping line up a little bit. And that's because, remember, I always look for at this point the weight bearing leg. And this is going to be important when we start to kind of progress through the drawing. But um, in this one, it looks to me like the weight's shifting. Yeah, that's the weight that's dominant to that side. And I'm going to throw a few wrapping lines here also, just to get the rib cage with some. And then if you struggle with proportion, which um, I do all the time, we can take stock of what we have here and say head, the pelvis. And whatever this is, I always just at a gesture stage where I'm not looking to get big um, exact proportions. This is just about speed and kind of indication. I'll make that the halfway point. And then now we can say weight brain leg. So femur, curve, kind of thinking of the best line there. If we have a bent leg, uh, kind of the first one we looked at a lot of straight legs, um, you can just create your gesture line part. Then I'll add another one maybe for the knee and just start to direct that line backwards. And then from there, take the direction of the lower leg and, and then come down. But this also applies to how I bend an arm. So here you see that curve, right? That cell is asymmetry in its relationship to the lines above. And here's an S curve, which I can make for the uh, calf. And then I always end with some kind of foot. You just make it a sock shape or a triangle. All right, so something I like to do, we're going to add in a little bit of a step here to play around with the type of pose. So remember we said intention was a big thing, right? And we can get a lot from just how a person is uh, positioned uh, that'll give a story or any number of psychological attributes you may want to give to a character or your painting or a sculpture. And weight is a lot of that, um, or how a person is posed. So I often use the pit of the neck, right, as a, uh, a place to judge the center of gravity, right, or the, the balance of the pose. And in a really balanced pose, or if we just kind of plumb a line, this will either line up with the weight-bearing ankle, or we'll see the, the weight equally distributed on either side of it. Right, so in using this as a, as a way to analyze this position, for that center of gravity, I can see you know, an equal amount of distance on either side, or even you know, look at the negative space and see how there's a, a very clean triangle uh, or clear triangle in there. And so that's something that I'll use quite a bit to um, create the type of pose I want. Right, So I can drop that in really you know, roughly or uh, lightly. And then from there, choose the type of pose. Like this is a very balanced pose. Or it's a balanced position. And that's going to have with it a suggestion of a story, right? Because this would be maybe something that's powerful or stable or static, right? Depending on the type of message you want to communicate to a viewer, there's no right or wrong thing here. It's just what your intention is. Um, so if I'm going to go ahead with this pose as is, right, and I'm just kind of reproducing what's there, I would work then into my supporting leg and then find that um, area of balance. But like I said at the start, there's no 
um, necessity for this. You don't have to make it look like what you're drawing. Uh, and I'm not saying that turn it into an alien or make it, you know, 40 heads tall. Uh, what I'm saying here is what matters most is what you want to say with the drawing about the subject. And this is just a simple way to play with that, um, to acclimate you to it. But for example, if I wanted to make this something other than balanced, what I would do is play with pushing the weight bearing leg behind that center of gravity. Right? If I start to do something like this, I'm going to pull that leg back and then get rid of this. Now I've created a different story. Now it looks like maybe she's in the process of falling or in the process of moving forward. Again, not one is right and not one is wrong. They're just different stories. Um, so what I like to do sometimes with gesture, because there's so little investment and all that matters is this is an exercise, is even if I see something like this, I'll try to turn it into what I call an about to drawing or an about to pose, right? And, and there's this is all over the place in terms of drawing books. So I'm not making anything new. I think um, a clear one that shows this is how to draw comics the Marvel way, right? It talks about positioning for drama. Uh, but it's sometimes fun to try to pose with the suggestion of something that's about to happen, right? So if I draw this same pose, um, but we play around with where that center of gravity or that area of balance is. Doesn't mean that it's wrong. It's just that now it's saying something slightly different. Then you could play with it being dramatic or less so. What matters is that you understand that you have options. So you could do something like that. I also think it's uh, sometimes it's more engaging for an audience, right? Because uh, Stable poses are very factual, right? They're uh, static. Things that are asymmetrical or off balance involve an audience, right? Without a, a finality to the position, now the audience has to invest a little bit. So just an exercise to help you play or explore variations on a pose. Um, okay, arms. So here we have slightly different position for the arms. So again, all that matters is that I don't lose continuity with the whole of the gesture. So here is this cervical, I mean, sorry, thoracic section pulls up. I'll use a shape that can simplify the deltoid and then lead into the humerus and then the forearm and then kind of the hand. And then for here, let me put some wrapping lines. Do the same thing on this side. And maybe this curve plays off of this one as well. Also the stretch line. And before I kind of move on to the last part where we'll go and uh, draw a time sequence together, uh, I just want to say a quick word about foreshortening because it's one of the most common questions that I'll get asked about in terms of gesture. So is foreshortening um, an issue with gesture? Absolutely, right? Because you could be drawing any number of poses uh, that might have a foreshortened element or, uh, you know, crazy positioning. Is gesture the time to do it? No, right? Because foreshortening requires a lot of 3D. So foreshortened poses, what I'll normally use is uh, extreme perspectives or breakdowns of cylinders and boxes and or stacked and or abstracted uh, overlapped shapes. Right now, we don't have either of these. Uh, I don't have volumes, and I'm not playing with shapes. I only have one shape, and that's the head. So how do we suggest foreshortened poses if we want um, in the gesture? Well, let's foreshorten some parts here. Uh, let's say, for example, that uh, I want this um, leg, the weight-bearing leg, to go away in space and foreshorten. Since I've drawn standing poses where the lines are just you know, basically the height of each part, if I want to foreshorten something, I suggest it by making the length of the line shorter. Right? So my uh, femur line or gesture line here was this long. At an early, early stage with gesture, if you want to suggest foreshortening, you can shorten that line. 
because you're not dealing with shapes. The next thing that I'll do is just exaggerate the rubber bands or the wrapping lines. So what I would want to say with that, if I were drawing it in perspective, is that this is a foreshortened limb going that way. Right? And it's pretty extreme here. But I can't, or I won't at this point, because I'm not using perspective. So I just take a piece. I just take the wrapping line. Okay? And then I'll give myself the, the setup or the suggestion so that when it's time to go into um, developing that out, I'll have an idea of what I want to do. So let's foreshorten the lower leg too, so you get the sense of what I'm, I'm after. And I'm going to make this feel shorter. Suggest that it's moving away in space and I'm seeing less of it. And then here, same thing. So that probably looks kind of strange because this other leg is in the near ground. So let's change this leg too. Uh, let's say this leg is really going to come out at us. Right? So in this, I'm going to think the knee is coming directly towards us, right? like an extremely foreshortened uh, pose. Instead of having this really long line, I would draw something like that. It's still a curve, so it has an asymmetrical relationship. And then when I make the lower leg, do the same thing, create a curve. And let's have the lower leg end just like in here. When somebody's uh, kind of kneeling on something. So I'm pushing those wrapping lines, ankles up here, here's the, the toe. And so it's not going to give you the fully foreshortened pose, but you'll get the basic idea of it just by shortening the length of each line. Right, so let's do another one with the arm. Arm comes towards us. It was this length when at the side. And then use some wrapping lines. Forearm's going to come towards us too. Wrapping lines. And let's put a hand here. Which is just kind of turned down. So this could be, I mean, another interesting or um, useful way to play around with this is just take gestures that you have, that you've drawn uh, from life, and then try to tweak them into being poses that they're not. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of um, how you could take parts or forms and exaggerate their foreshortened sense of depth. This doesn't have to be as developed as I've done it. Uh, it could be light and suggested. Here I'm just trying to push those lines. Uh, and even areas here I'm trying to push line weight by making that darker. And since I'm only dealing with line in the gesture, uh, I'm using that darker line to give it an advance in space or kind of come toward us. So that's it. Those are quite honestly all the things I ever think about or deal with in gesture. Um, it's those Six, six steps in that same sequence every single time I sit down to make a drawing, always built from kind of the same practical organization of what I find to be the most important aspects design-wise of the figure. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, transition into a body sequence so that we can maybe look at a series of uh, movements uh, or one movement in a series of poses to give you a sense for um, how I might deal with different poses that aren't just both you know, three quarter.